Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their premiere auction in June of 2015. When we think about Arasakas, we normally think about the uh, Type 38 and the Type 99 that were used in World War II, but there were actually a couple predecessors. So the story dates back originally to 1880 when Japan manufactured its first domestic combat rifle, the Type 13 Murata. And they went through a couple iterations of Murata rifles, but then in 1895, really the, uh, the army decided that it was time to join what was going to become the 20th century. And they really needed a small bore repeating rifle. So in 1895, the Tokyo Arsenal, in conjunction with the Japanese government, set up a commission to investigate what kind of rifles were out there, what was the technology that was available, and what would be the best design of bolt action small bore, really classic rifle as we would think of it in World War I and World War II terms. And on this rifle, on this commission, they had three people. Um, the most important, the one that we remember, is Colonel Nariakara, Nariakira Arasaka. His name got stuck onto all of these guns. There's also a, uh, a Lieutenant Colonel Miata and a Mr. Hanjo, who was a civilian. And these three guys went around and they looked at all the rifles that were available and they came up with an idea for combining the elements into the best gun they could come up with. And the result of that was the Type 30 Arasaka rifle. So many of the elements of this came from the 1893 and 1895 Mauser designs. Um, when you look at the action, it, it looks very much in many ways like a Mauser. Um, it is a cock on closing action, which means, uh, for example, the end, Lee Enfield is the same way. It's a little faster to use, probably, because you're all, you've already got all the momentum of, from closing the bolt when you go to cock it. Um, which is helpful. These are particularly distinctive, they're called hook safety rifles for a reason that we will see in just a moment. At any rate, uh, the commission was put together in 1895 and by 1897 they'd come up with their recommendations, they had this rifle design and it went into production in 1898. Ultimately about 554,000 of these rifles were made, really quite a lot. Um, they also made about 45,000 Type 30 carbines which obviously a lot more rare. And this was the primary rifle that the Japanese Army used in the Russo-Japanese War, 1904 and 1905. Um, however, it only lasted about eight years. Frankly, about as soon as they put these into production, they realized that there were, there were some issues that could be improved and they started working on improved variants. Um, the Type 35 was made for the Navy. That, that only lasted a couple years. That was an attempt to address some of the issues. The final the, the real fix was the Type 38, which was a fantastic overall gun, which we'll address in a later video. Why don't I bring the camera up uh, a little closer here. Let's take a look at the internals because this bolt is kind of unusual compared to what you're expecting from an Arasaka. So one thing you will expect from an Arasaka we do have here, and that is a chrysanthemum. In this case it's been lightly cancelled, meaning that it is no longer the Emperor's property. Could mean it was taken out of service or it could mean it was surrendered at the end of World War II. We then have a series of characters. Um, these are a little bit different than the World War II guns. This is three, ten, year type. So uh, the way you would do this is the three and the ten are actually multiplied and that gives you a year 30 shiki or a, a type 30 rifle. That was measured, the 30 refers to the 30th year of the Meiji era. That's where that comes from and that would translate to 1897. Now let's take a look at the bolt. Obviously here's the hook safety. This is very distinctive. This allows you to, this both functions as a safety and a cocking piece. So when that is up, the gun is on safe, can't be fired, trigger does nothing, and of course it blocks your sights so that it's obvious that the gun is on safe. When we rotate it down, the gun is now cocked, and should we fire, and let's say it doesn't go off, I can use this hook to recock the rifle and try a second shot on a primer that might be problematic. Now to pull the bolt out, we have an early Mauser style button bolt release here. I'm going to lift that up, press the button, the bolt comes out. This is most definitely not like a World War II style Type 38 or Type 99 Arasaka bolt. This is kind of a nightmare to disassemble the back end of. I'm not going to do that here. Um, what it does have that I can show you is a separate bolt head. That comes out. That does make it nice and easy 
to take out our extractor, which just sits on there. There's the extractor. And that comes off as well. So a lot of little fiddly bits. You know, when they decided that they needed to update this rifle, um, this was the sort of thing that they realized, you know what, we can, we can do better than, than this. So we can also see how the safety actually works. When the gun is in battery and ready to fire, the striker is held back here, and this piece is being held by the sear and thus the trigger. When I put the gun onto safe, pull this and rotate it 90 degrees, now if the bolt handle is locked, the safety is up, and you can see that the, the striker is locked here in this safety notch and it's completely out of line with the trigger, so pulling the trigger does nothing. For Arasaka collectors, you'll note this is a pretty much a round bolt handle instead of the plum shape that they went to later on. All right, one more thing that I want to address is a common misconception of folks who aren't all that familiar with Arasakas. It's not really obvious on this gun, but you can see here a, uh, a, a seam down the line of the buttstock. And on some Arasakas, that, be that separates a little bit and becomes very obvious. Sometimes the coloration is a little different. A lot of people think that's a crack in the wood or it's a defect. It's not. In fact, this was a very deliberate and, frankly, a pretty clever design element. It all stems to the fact that the wood that was available in Japan for rifle stocks wasn't the strongest, greatest sort of wood. And if they made the butt stocks out of a single piece, obviously you would want the grain running this direction. And you'd end up with this problem that down here at the toe, you'd have very short pieces of, of grain and you'd end up breaking the toes of the stock off. So what they decided to do instead was cut the stock to, you know, out of a single piece of wood but just to here and then they would use a separate piece of wood down here where the grain actually runs this direction parallel to the bottom of the stock. Then to hold it in place they did several things. They have an L-shaped butt plate so one screw goes in vertically and then this screw goes in horizontally that holds it in place. There's actually a huge dovetail underneath here. So these two, you can't just pull the bottom of the stock off. It's actually dovetailed in place. And then the front screw on the sling swivel is actually long enough that it goes all the way through this separate piece into the main component of the stock. So these things all work together to make this a very strong and very stable stock. Um, it's not accidental. It's not an oversight. It's not because they didn't have enough wood. It's just because the wood tended to crack right down here. So another interesting element of this particular Type 30 is that we can see from the rear sight it's been recalibrated for the modern 6.5 Japanese ammunition, or what would have been modern once the Type 38 was adopted. Originally these rifles were designed around a 161 grain round nose bullet fired at about 2250 feet per second. And that was pretty typical of, of early bolt action guns. Uh, pretty much every country out there initially developed a round nose bullet before they realized that a Spitzer, a pointed bullet, was uh, ballistically much better and they changed to those. So the, early, the original Type 30 rear sights have a little notch at the top um, for your, your longest sighting range. There's a little V-notch up there. They're, the recalibrated sights do not. So this is a recalibrated one. You will also occasionally find these with Finnish SA property marks. Um, a lot of, you know, the Finns got rifles from the Italians and also from the Japanese, and what the Japanese typically gave them or sold them were rather obsolete Type 30s. So when they were in Finnish property, they'd have been struck with an SA in a box here. This one's in remarkably good condition, and it doesn't have that Finnish property mark. Uh, it's really a quite nice rifle. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to have a Type 30 in your own personal collection, you will have the opportunity to buy this one if you want it. This is, of course, coming up for sale in Rock Island's June regional auction. So if you click the link below, that'll take you to their catalog page. You can look at their pictures. Um, it is part of a lot, so you can take a look at the other guns that it comes with. And uh, go ahead and place a bid online or come down here to the auction if you want to look at them in person. Thanks for watching.